How many strips of wood do you think it takes to turn on a light bulb? G'day, I'm Mr. Morosi. It occurred to me most people think lamps should look like this, which is fine, but they're just so vanilla. So I'm going to turn some of my offcuts over here into a hanging lamp, which is more sculpture than ice cream. Oh, sorry, I mean lamp. More sculpture than lamp. I recently built my steam box and tested bending and twisting some wood into these beautiful organic shapes. So I think the sculpture will follow a similar style. I began by picking out some wood with suitable grain. I want hardwood, but not indestructible Aussie metal trees. So if it passes the bite test, it's good to go. Ideally it would be green, not kiln dried, but let's see what happens. I want the grain to be parallel to the bend. In this case it's tricky as my bends will be twisting, but the early tests seemed to work, so I drew a line so I knew which way to cut. Now just like my mate, I'm not an engineer, I too have a new tool in the workshop. Meat Silly, this beaut of a bandsaw from 1983 named after my dead childhood dog because I dreamed about her the night before I bought it. Tilly cost me less than a slab of craft beer and a succulent Chinese meal, and included a few new blades. It's a bloody bargain. I swapped the blade out for a brand new six tooth ripping blade and clamped a fence so I could cut three millimeter strips. I'm cutting tazzy oak for lighter strips and some leftover blackwood for darker ones. For a little bit of creative freedom, I cut a mixture of thin and thick strips. Now I have a masters in how to think creatively, whatever you think that means. But when staring at these strips of wood, I was kind of lost. Until I remembered the words of Yohani Palazma. Jahani who? Jahani Palazma, the Finnish architect who talks about the connection between the mind and the hand. But my mind talks to my hand. Wrong. According to JP, the working hand has its own cunning independence and capacity for autonomous thought. So you're saying I should just start bending and see what happens? Now you think it. Hey, why are you here? Why is the garage door closed? That's because you don't want your neighbours to see you talking to yourself. With this revelation, I went away and made a couple of models loosely trying to capture the motion of the waves and the twisting of the coastline where I live. Tilly, being the lively animal she was, left the strips pretty rough, so I sanded them down to make things easier later on. I started on prototyping the lamp and figuring out a jig to help with the bending. The lamp will have a central stem, but I need to connect the bulb somehow. With all the chaos of twisting wood, I thought another straight line would help break it up. So I took an offcut of Oregon and notched it out to fit the stem. I then made a jig using some old offcuts of laminated ply by cutting two uprights and a notch in each. This way I can position the stem with enough space to bend the strips around and underneath. I guess all there is left to do is fill her up and get steaming. While the steamer gets going, I soak the strips in water to help them take the bend, and then began setting up some kind of steam bending surgery, so I had everything I needed in the few seconds I have while the wood is hot. After about an hour in the steamer, the wood was ready, so I just let my hands do the thinking from now on. Bending like this, without a mould to hem you in, is really quite a liberating feeling. It's just pure creation. It really forces you to feel your way through it, thinking two steps ahead, how each piece will interact, how will it bend around the bowl, what will the final form be? And while you run these calculations, you can see the wood cooling down in front of you. With each second, it starts to behave differently. So it's really against the clock. I let it dry overnight, which gave me time to think about how I really buggered this process up. To get the cable down the stem, I need to remove all the bent strips, which would mean having to arrange this chaos again. I tried to create a coating system, but to be honest, I figured it was impossible. So I resigned to just getting on with it and I'll figure it out later. 
I used Tilly to cut the stem in half and then cut two grooves to accommodate the cable. I drilled a hole for the cable to pop out and chamfered the inside so I'd push it through later on. I then glued the pieces back together and let it cure for a few hours. That morning, while I was having a cuppa and staring into the flames, I saw this burning stick and thought, maybe for a bit of contrast, I should just burn the stem. Now you would be thinking, hey Mr. Morosi, burning two bits of wood glued together would melt the glue. And that would be right, so points to you. But as they say, you can't bag all your wallaroos at once, nor can you clamp bubbling glue in a vain attempt to undo your mistake. Fortunately, I discovered this black wax stick which after a bit of sanding seemed to do the trick. Before the final glue up, I made a new plate for the bulb holder and notched it into the stem so I could remove in future if I needed to. After completing everything I should have done before steaming, I took my pile of sticks, abandoned my blue tape and put my thinking hands to work. Using a mixture of wood glue and super glue, which would cause me a headache down the track, I rearranged this fluid puzzle working from all angles, positioning three strips at a time before gluing one strip, deciding the next two didn't work and doing this again and again and again well into the night. What went from 20 minutes of steam bending blew out into a marathon seven hours of reassembly. Maybe my hands don't think as good as I thought, or maybe your honey plasma was wrong. I, we'll never know. But with a new dawn, I was able to see the fruits of my labour, and I was pretty pleased. But the morning's rays also revealed the marks of a midnight glue rush. The super glue had reacted with the wood glue and foamed all the joints. So a new problem to be solved was how to cover up this mess. The twists themselves are a kind of beautiful chaos, swirling around a constant line. So to enforce this with some contrast, I began creating actual chaos taking the remaining strips and cutting them into small random lengths. I layered them one by one, round and round, forming two nests, from which the lamp grows and then tapers back. I had decided earlier on that I wanted the strips to be rough, but with the nests at the end, it felt better to have them smooth. And if you're thinking, how are you going to sand wobbling, twisting bits of wood? Well, this is how, and I can tell you, it's a real pain in the ass. To finish it, I used some universal wood oil. Getting between the twists was another box of frogs, but I managed with a rag on a stick, a rag on a ruler, a paintbrush, and a little bit of patience. Electricity is dangerous. I felt its cruel sting before and learnt the hard way, so if you're in doubt, it's best to get a professional to do it. In saying that, this lamp is for me and my home, so I'm just going to do it. Just don't watch what I'm doing closely. At the last minute, I made this block to run the cable through so it wouldn't put tension on the plug. Now I'd be lying if I didn't say this lamp was made purely because there is this random power outlet high up on the wall in the house I rent. So for the time being, this is where it's going to live. And if you're wondering what happened with all those Tassie oak strips, well, stay tuned. And in the meantime, maybe go and watch how I made this box. Thanks for watching.